Okay, so we've finally got in our ePortfolio. We've got this skeleton created. We have all of our pages and we have our menu structure and everything's looking pretty good, except for we don't really have any content. Again, we've just built what we can kind of call the skeleton of our site. We're ready to start putting in content and actually building up the pages in our ePortfolio. So let's talk about that. So if I come back over to my dashboard, I'm gonna to go to pages and this is where you access each individual page that you've created. And you'll notice as you hover over the specific pages, you'll see uh, a, a button that says edit. And what I'm going to do, let's talk about just simple text for a second. So I'm going to come into my about me. I mean, we already typed that up. And, and this is pretty much, this is your basic... I don't know what we can call this. We can call this like in, input dialog box. This is where we can type in text and you have your pretty standard, your typical text tools that you find with most text editing capabilities online these days with, you know, blog, blog creators and, and content management systems and the, those kind of things. You've, you've got your standard tools and it works just like a word editor would work. I might say something like, thanks for visiting. I hope you enjoy my e-portfolio. You know, I'm not really going to write up a whole bunch of things. This is up to you to create the kind of text that you want to have, especially on your About Me page. You know, you want to talk about yourself. That's up to you. I'll let you do that. But you can play around with these tools. They're pretty straightforward. You know, you can align your text to left, right, center. You can add um, hyperlinks into your ePortfolio. And that is something that we should probably actually talk about real quick because you want to try to limit the amount of time that you send a viewer away from your ePortfolio, meaning that if there are a lot of sites outside of your ePortfolio you want your user to visit, you need to try to do that as, as infrequently as possible. The less that you take people away from your ePortfolio, the better. But there are cases and there are situations where, you know, I do think that that is warranted, like such as, you know, you might want to link to the main company page from the company at the, you know, from the internship you did over the summer. So, Let's just say, for example, I'm a big grumpy cat fan, as we will learn about in this video, we'll be we talking about content. But let's just say that I wanted to, you know, this was my company's page for whatever reason, and I wanted to link to it. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to grab the URL. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come back into my editor and I'm going to say something like, you know, visit my company's And then I can come over and I can click and highlight it. And then what I will do is click on the insert edit link button. And this dialog box will appear and it'll say enter the destination URL. And so I will paste that into there. But the important point trying to be made here is you have this button that says open link in new window tab. And you absolutely want to make sure that you remember to click that. And so I will say add link and you'll notice that the text that I highlighted before in the, in the click that button changed into this purple kind of text, which indicates that it is an active hyperlink. And another thing that's really important is anytime you make any sort of changes, add any content, do anything in any of your pages, you need to make sure that you update, click the update button so that it takes effect. And just to show you, what this you know open in a uh, new tab window uh, does. If I refresh the page here and I come in and I find that page, the about me page, and I see that I have this link here, visit my company's page here. And if I click on it, what happens is a new tab opened up and it didn't, 
It took me away from my ePortfolio, but it took me away in a new tab that I can easily close out and return into the ePortfolio with. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have, a, if you don't open in a new tab and you have a bunch of links, what you know, you're potentially what what you're looking at is the viewer can get lost in the internet, never find his way back into your ePortfolio, and you know you basically your ePortfolio is forgotten about. And um, we don't want to do that. You know, we want, we want, if we have to send someone away, we want them to be able to easily return just by opening it up in a new tab and closing that tab and being right back into our ePortfolio. So hopefully you uh, follow or understand what I'm trying to say there, because I think it's very important that you are very cautious about that as you are creating your ePortfolio. So that's enough about text and hyperlinks. Let's talk for a second about adding photography into our ePortfolio. So if I come into my pages and I come down to my photography page and I edit it, well, in my photography page on my ePortfolio, I probably want to have photography being showcased on that page. I probably want to have some of the photos that I've done, whether it be, you know, for a class project or for internships or for whatever it may be. So let's talk about how to do that. If we are in our photography page and we are ready to add some content into it, if we look up at the top of, uh, I don't know what exactly uh, they call this kind of section, but if, if we look up here, we see an add media button and media as you would figure, means things like video and audio and photography. So if I'm in my insert media box, dialog box here, it's the first thing you see is your media library, and it's saying that no items are found. Well, that's because I haven't added any content. I haven't added any media yet into WordPress. So let's do that. I've got some photos I want. So you can either go off screen and drag it onto this uh, page or you can click select files and that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to navigate okay so I've navigated my way into where my photos are and you know just hypothetically I want to be a grumpy cat meme maker and that is why I'm going to share some grumpy cat meme photos um, those are the photos I've created and I want to showcase them for whatever reason so I'm going to select a couple of these photos and I'm going to say open and what's going to happen is it's going to import these photos into my media library and what I can do is the the you have two options. You can insert photos one at a time, or you can also create a gallery. And so let's start with uh, adding one photo at a time. So the I can click through all the different photos that I've added, and the one that is with the blue box and the check mark is your active or it means that they are active photos. And I'm gonna say insert into page. Oh, and it actually added all of them. And that is not what I wanted to do, so I can delete them out. And let's do this one more time. Add media. I'm just gonna select the one. You have options over here on the right. You can give your, you can give it a title. Uh, you can give it a short caption, alternate text, and description. Those are things that if you uh, want to look into, you know, the reasonings for that, you can do that on your own time. Let's not worry about that too much right now. So I have it selected, and I'm going to insert into page. And there it is. If I select it, I have some options as where I am going to align it, whether it be, you know, towards the left or the center or the right. Again, these are things that... When it comes to the layout of your text and your photography and your videos, that's up to you to decide what works best or what um, looks best for you. There, you know, there's nothing that is the official right or wrong way to do it. So don't worry about that too much. Really, I guess w when you're just beginning, just worry about understanding that you know how to enter in your content. So let's update this page. And... If I come over to my portfolio and refresh it, and if I come into my photography page, 
hey, look, there's that image that I just added into my ePortfolio. It is now live and active up on my photography page. So that is adding a single photograph. What if I want to do something a little more professional than, not, not that having a single photograph isn't professional, but what if I want something that looks a little nicer um, if I know that I've got more than one photo. So let's, let's take a look at how we would do that. I'll come into my, back into my page and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna click add media again, only this time I'm gonna say create gallery. And so I'm gonna select some of the photos that I didn't already have. Again, you got some options that you can work with and I'm going to say create new gallery. And then I've got some gallery settings such as link to an attachment page, a media file or none, columns, thumbnail and size. These are all options that you again can play around with until you find what suits you and reflects your work the best how how you know how you want it to be. But I'm going to insert this gallery and I get these three small images that form up down here but let's update the page and let's take a look at what that looks like and so basically it puts them into it tried to form a grid system and what will happen is I can click on one and I get a not a full size a full scale but I get a large scale basically preview of these photos and, you know, for someone who's got a series of photographs that, um, you know, to you that may look a lot nicer, a lot more professional looking through a gallery than it does just by having single static images. And I can close out and return back to that page. So that's that's photos. It's It's really straightforward. It's going into... clicking add media, going into your media library, adding in your photos, and then selecting the ones that you want and inserting inserting it into that page. So that's photos. Now what about videos? What about if you have reels, you have any sort of video work that you need to be able to put up on your ePortfolio and share? How would you go about doing that? Well, as you might guess, Word, the, the, the free, the basic WordPress account that we have is not going to give you access into uploading video files directly into WordPress. And there are a few reasons for that. Uh, the main one being is why are they going to host and store your files on their servers for free when you're not paying them anything. So what we need to do and what is highly recommended is that you create either a YouTube account or you create a Vimeo account and you upload your videos into either one of those. And once you have all of your videos on your YouTube or Vimeo account, what we can do is we can use the URLs to those videos to insert them into WordPress. So let's go into our video page and click edit and this is just for the sake of example I'm going to go find that grumpy cat video and I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna copy the URL to that video and I am gonna go into my video page and I am going to say add media and on the left hand side you will see create gallery which we looked at set featured image which we didn't talk about um, we don't need to worry about that insert tweet insert YouTube insert from URL and your first instinct might be well insert YouTube right because I'm trying to put in a YouTube video but actually that's really not that strong of a feature it doesn't work the way that you would think um, it you know it somehow taps into the YouTube and you can search by YouTube user or you can search for the title and you almost always never actually find the one that you were looking for doing it this way. What we want to do is we want to insert, insert from URL and it's exactly like you would guess what, what it wants you to do is it wants you to type in the URL of the piece of media that you want and we copied and now we're going to paste in that URL 
to that grumpy cat video from YouTube and you get a, a preview and it says, Oh yeah, I recognize that's a YouTube URL. I recognize it's a YouTube video and it finds the video and you see visually, you see the confirmation and I'm going to say insert into page. And when you are looking at it from the dashboard perspective and the page editor, you see basically what is HTML code. Um, uh, it, it doesn't, that, that's that's all you get. You don't get really a visual reference that it's a video. You just get this kind of line of code. But that's okay. We're going to update the page. And if I come back into my ePortfolio and I find my video page, and hey, what do you know, there is my Grumpy Cat video that plays when you click on it. And again, it could be a Vimeo uh, URL as well. It should work and look just exactly the same. So that is videos, that is photography, and that is text inside of WordPress. And in the next video, we need to take a look. It, it's something that I was going to try to include in here, but it takes a little more special attention, and that is using a service called Scribed so that you can embed text documents such as PDFs, your resume, for example, or Word, uh, Microsoft Word files directly into the ePortfolio. So let's take a look at that in the next video, and we'll see you then.